Thank you. If you have a Bible, go ahead and um, open up to Hebrews um, chapter 13 and Malachi 3. That's where we're going to be looking at today. If you didn't bring a Bible with you, no worries. We, um, I would encourage you to use one of the Bibles that's provided for you under the seat in front of you. Um, on the those two scripture references, Hebrews uh, 13 is on page 1009 in the Bible in front of you, and then Malachi 3 is on page 802. Um, if you don't own a Bible, we would love for you to be able to take the Bible that's under the seat in front of you as our free gift to you. Otherwise, they're there for you to use each week um, as you come and join us. Um, as Justin said, um, my name is Claire Campbell, and I am the uh, children's director here at Harbor Trinity Church and Preschool, and um, which basically means I'm in charge. I oversee um, kids uh, zero to sixth grade. Um, and in the last few weeks, um, we as a staff have been reading this book, and we've been talking about it in our Sunday messages to the Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer. And each week we've been spending time uh, talking about different attributes of God. And today we're going to be focusing on yet another attribute of God. And my hope is that you leave here today thinking and contemplating just a bit deeper about who God is. So before we get started, let's pray. Oh, Christ our Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. As rabbits to their dens, so we have run to you for safety. As birds from their wanderings... So we have flown to you for peace. Chance and change are busy in our little world of nature and men, but in you we find no variables, nor shadow of turning. We rest in you without fear or doubt and face our tomorrows without anxiety. Amen. Now, I'm not sure about each of you, but if any of you have been reading through this book with us, I feel like a lot of the concepts in this book that we have been looking at are really thought-provoking. And when Justin first told us that he wanted to read through this book during the summer, I was thinking, okay, I think I can handle this. This is not that thick of a book, right? If you know anything about me, this is not my favorite thing. I am not a reader. Um, I, my first choice of fun things to do is not grab a book and sit down and read. My, I, would, I would prefer to sit and watch a TV show, um, something silly on TV, or even people watch before I sit down and read a book. That's just my personality. So when I looked at this, I was like, okay, this is doable. Um, I think I can do it. But I do want to say that in recent years, God has really been teaching me um, to enjoy reading. And believe it or not, I actually have moments where I want to sit down and read which is unusual for me. And for those of you that know me, you, that's, that's probably a bit of a shock because that's not my typical MO, is to sit down and read. But when I began to read this thin little book, um, I had to stop and think about what it was trying to say. There were certain language in there that was difficult to st understand at times. And I even went to Justin and was like, I'm a little... I'm a little confused by some of this stuff in here um, because I'd have to read a sentence a couple of times and really slow down and try to understand what the author was saying. And so I will, I will say, though, that through this, God has been teaching me even more to stop and take time to think about him and all that he is. And my hope is for you today that you're able to do the same thing, that you can stop and think about God and all that he is. Now, of course, the Bible is our main source of learning, but I do love to hear from other biblical scholars or commentaries and just see what their thoughts are, um, what they have to say about scripture, because sometimes it, it just deepens my personal understanding of who God is. Now, one of the phrases that kept going through my head at the very beginning as I began to read this was that our God never changes. And the verse that kept going through my head was actually Hebrews 13.8, which says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, this also happens to be the one thing that I want you to remember for today. You're probably going to walk away and not remember 
everything that I say, but this is the one thing I want you to remember for today. And you get a two-for-one deal. How many of you like deals? Raise your hand. Great. Okay. This is all about you then. Uh, you get a two-for-one deal. Not only do you get a point to remember, but you get to learn a Bible verse today too. So, um, and this happens to be a Bible verse that we taught uh, a couple of sessions back in our kids club session. And it, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And I want you to say that out loud with me because sometimes when we repeat it out loud, it gets in our brains even more. So say that with me. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13.8. Don't forget the little, uh, where you get to find it, the address, as we like to say in kids' ministries, where they can find it. As that statement of our God never changes kept going through my head, I honestly did not see any chapter in this book that was anything to do with our God not changing. But then I learned that the fancy way of saying that is the immutability of God. And the root word of immutable is mutable, which means capable of change or being changed in form, quality, or nature. The prefix I am or am in front of that word simply means not. And according to vocabulary.com, immutable means not subject or susceptible to change or variation in form or quality or nature. This means that not only God, God not only doesn't change, but he can't. There's no choice on his part. He simply cannot change. Now, while many of us may not like change, the fact is that we all change. We change in our development, physically and mentally. And in the last 10 years that I've been on staff here at HTC, I've seen so many students grow from um, being preschoolers to elementary school to middle school and high school and even um, some young adults. And I had actually had the privilege, and it was a privilege for me, to go to Hume Lake with our students two weeks ago um, and get to spend time with our middle school and high school students. And I love just being around them and seeing how they've changed and developed over the years. And so many of them have because that's just part of who we are. And I love seeing the differences that they bring to the table now. I mean, they even talk differently than I remember at that age. In fact, um, I now know what the word riz means. Um, and if you're not sure what that means, you can ask any junior higher or high schooler. They'll be happy to tell you. But I had to ask, hey, what does that mean? you got to tell me because I, I don't know. Um, but I happen to be somebody that is fascinated with the way people's brains work, especially young children. Um, I love to know what they're thinking because so many times they tell us exactly what they're thinking, even if it's not the most kind, they still say it. And I just, I love to know their honesty behind it and what they're thinking. Now, my area of study in college happened to be child development. And in my various studies in school and being around large groups of kids for most of my life, it is a well-known fact that children thrive in a structured environment with predictability. It helps them feel safe. There's a reason why our kids' classes on a Sunday morning have a specific and similar routine each week. We want those kids to feel safe when they come here. We want it to be predictable for them so that they feel safe when mom and dad go somewhere else and they're left behind. In fact, I actually believe that most people like some form of predictability too. In fact, imagine if you came in next week and everything in here was completely different from all the previous weeks. The chairs were switched around, maybe facing a different direction. Um, the walls were painted, maybe a different color or a bright color. The band was totally different than anybody you'd ever seen before. Maybe the coffee creamer wasn't the one you were expecting that morning. Um, you would be hearing a buzz of words around the sanctuary probably right now. And maybe not some, such, some great words either. We all want something to count on and trust in some sort of constant in our life. So how wonderful is it that our God, the same God that spoke and created the world, the same God that breathes life into us, tells us that he does not change. Now, A.W. Tozer writes it this way, the concept of a growing or developing God 
is not found in the scriptures. For a moral being, that's us, to change, it would be necessary that he change, that the change be in one of three directions. He must go from better to worse or worse to better. He must change from within himself as immature to mature, or he must change from one sort of being to another. God cannot change in any of these directions. He cannot change for the better. Since he is perfectly holy, he has never been less holy than he is now, and he can never be holier than he is and has always been. Any deterioration within the holy nature of God is impossible. Now that, to me, was a huge concept when I looked at that. That our God has never been any less holy than he is now. And he can never be any holier than he is and has always been. Our God is simply incapable of change. To know someone who simply cannot change is probably a foreign concept to most of us. Because we live in a world that is constantly changing. Every day, people change, things change all around us, technology changes, places change. We change emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Some of these changes are for the good and some not so good. But change is inevitable for us. Tozer writes it this way, that in God, no change is possible. In men, change is impossible to escape. For us, change is impossible to escape. But I also believe that as human beings, we seek the unchanging nature of others. We desire to find someone that we can trust and believe in, someone who will be a constant in our life and love us no matter what. Now, for many of us, that might be a primary, uh, primary caregiver or a parent, but I also recognize that not everybody has that opportunity to have a primary caregiver or a parent pour into them for that stability. So some of us may seek that stability in a significant other or a lifelong friend. There was a pivotal point in my life when I remember God showing me an earthly example of his unchanging love for me. And now I'm a, I'm a dog person but I respect the fact that some people may feel similarly about their cats or other pets the way that I feel about the dogs that have been in my life. So we'll, let me just preface it at that. Now my family and I, which is my mom and my brother and myself, we had adopted this dog, Daphne, and she was two. She was a cocker spaniel, and no matter what we did, Daphne greeted us with enthusiasm. She snuggled with us. She laid by my pillow at night most of the time. It was either my pillow or my brother's. And she was always loyal. She lived until she was 16. And when it came time to put her to sleep, we realized something important. My mom and brother and I chose to be with her in the room when they put her down to sleep. And when she was gone, after she had breathed her last, we just sobbed together and just looked at each other and realized how she was such an example of God's love for each of us constant and never changing. She was always there to greet us and love us no matter what. And such a tangible earthly example for us of how God loves us. God had provided her to our family at a time that was full of change for us. My parents had been divorced for a little bit by this point. My brother Graham and I were visiting my dad every other weekend and every other holiday. So we were going back and forth between two different houses all the time. My mom was working and going to school, and my brother and I were home alone a lot because of our circumstances, making top ramen and eating cereal for dinner. You know, the things that kids do when they're at home by themselves. And in that moment, we realized that God showed us just a small glimpse of his never-changing love for us. Now look back at what scripture says in Hebrews 13.8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The book of Hebrews was written for first century uh, Jewish Christians, and it was a call for Christians to grow in their maturity, in their faith. It was written as a reminder, a focus, and an encouragement. And it can be a reminder and an encouragement for us, too, that even in a constant and 
forever changing world, Christ will never change. He is the same in the past, the present, and the future. Now, I don't know about you, but that statement and truth fills me with so much trust for God and an immense amount of peace. And if you're anything like me, you need to have reminders of what God's truths are because we tend to forget. And that's why we, you know, we want to come to church so we can hear those truths and fill our minds with those truths. And that is the truth that we have someone who will not change knowing that I have someone that won't change, that his love for me will never change, and that I can always count on him brings me so much peace. Our God is the same God to every generation. And what makes my brain hurt when I think about this is that this is the same God that created the world, breathed life into man, made Abraham a father of many nations, when he and his wife were barren, rescued the Israelites from captivity, the same God that rescued Daniel from the lion's den, the one that chose Mary to carry the Savior of the world, the one that healed the sick, and the very same God that sent his son to die for all of us to pay the price for our sin. This is the God that never changes his feelings toward us. There's nothing that we can do to make God love us more. His love for us never changes. He cannot love us any more or any less. The only thing that is true is that our affection for him can change. We can love God more. Now, this is so different than any other relationship that we would know. Every relationship we have changes at some point. Now, I can think back to when I first met my husband, And I tell him all the time that it makes me chuckle to think about that he's the same person that I met back then 17 years ago. Um, That he's the same person that at that point I barely knew, but I know him so much better now. This, this, This same man that I share my life with now is the same guy that was so nervous to talk to me on the phone the first time he called me that he accidentally asked me to go to the dog park with his friend instead of saying me and my friend, which left me slightly confused. Um, He's the same guy that when I joined him and his friends at church to sit with him, the only seat open was conveniently located right next to him. The same guy that on our first official coffee date was so nervous that he bought coffee for himself before I arrived and was already sipping it when I got there, yet we were supposed to meet for coffee. So, you know, makes me laugh now. And I did not, me at the time, I had no idea that he was nervous. I was just thinking, oh, he's kind of different. Um, <laughs> no clue, yeah. The thing is, is I know him so much better now than I did then, and I have such a deep, much deeper love for him than I did back then. This is the same person that I know now loves me unconditionally. The same guy that loves Jesus, he loves our kids unconditionally. And it's the same guy that I get to say goodnight to every night and wake up to every morning. Now, Scripture also tells us of God's unchanging love for us in Malachi 3, verses 6 and 7. And you can turn to that with me, or we should have it on the screen for you too. For I, the Lord, do not change... Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. If God could change his mind about us, he might, but based on our behaviors toward him. From the days, from the days long ago, we have turned away from God's statutes and have even neglected to keep them, yet he responds to us in the same manner. The Lord does not change his love for us or his choice of us. If he did turn away from us, we would be consumed, but that's not the case. Instead, in verse 7, he gives us a call to repentance. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Now, if you've been around church 
for a while, you know that repentance is to turn away from sin. But repentance is also turning back to God. Those that once walked with God and have been committed to him must return to him. When they do return, they will discover that he will return to them. He will return to them with blessing and his presence. That is what scripture tells us. What a beautiful thing that when we turn away from God, he's not only ready to welcome us back, but he calls for us to return and then offers us a blessing. We all know that if we don't put effort into our relationships with others, the result is going to be that it feels like we're far away from that person. <clears throat> Whether it's a friendship or a marriage, it doesn't matter. If I call on the phone and the person doesn't answer or they don't, spend, they don't respond to my text messages or don't want to spend time with me, um, they can feel like they're far away. The same is true in our relationship with God. If we turn away from him, He can feel far away. But in this case, God might be right where we left him, waiting for us to return. Uh, A.W. Tozer writes it this way. He says, God never changes moods or cools off in his affections or loses enthusiasm. His attitude towards sin is the same as it was when he drove out the sinful man from the eastward garden. And his attitude toward the sinner is the same as when he stretched forth his hands and cried, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God's mood and attitude toward us does not change. Now, my mood changes all the time, and many times I have to apologize for it. Yes. God, on the other hand, continues to love us. His attitude towards sin also does not change. He feels the same towards sin as he did when he drove the people out of the garden in the very beginning. But he loves us and calls for us to return to him and calls for us to leave our sin behind. Now, isn't it fascinating to think that the one who does not change offers us the ability for eternal change through repentance? Tozer writes it this way, in a fallen world like this, the very ability to change is a golden treasure, a gift from God. God offers us the ability to repent, to change our ways, to turn away from sin and turn towards God's ways. Look at 2 Corinthians 5.17 with me. We should have it on the screen for you. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We have an opportunity to be changed people on the inside by the one who does not change. When we choose this, the Holy Spirit gives us new life, and we are not the same anymore. We are forever changed. We are new creations because Christ offers us forgiveness. And so what I want to do is I want to invite everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes, not because there's anything magic in that posture, but just to take a moment and pause and reflect. And I would like to give you three different opportunities to respond to what you've heard today. For some of you, maybe this is your first time to Harbor Trinity, and there may be a part of today as we talked about God, um, a God that is the same yesterday and today and forever. That might be something new for you. And maybe even for others, you are new to Jesus, church, and the Bible. Perhaps you were invited here by a friend or you're returning to church for the first time in a while. But you recognize that there's a part of today that's feeling very familiar to you. And you feel like God is calling you into a relationship with him or maybe back into relationship with him. If that's you today and you feel like God is speaking to you and you want to put your faith in him either for the first time or you've come back to church and you're wanting to return to faith in him, could you do me a favor and lift your hand up real high so I can pray with you? Thank you so much to those who are lifting your hands. For those two groups of people that raise their hands, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me, whether for the first time or you're coming back to faith, or maybe even you felt um, a calling on that, but you didn't raise your hand. I still want to invite you to pray this prayer along with me, and you can pray this in your heart. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me so much. I believe that you are the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins. I now turn away from my sin in my life, which separated me from you. 
And this is the point where you can um, tell God any, any barriers that would come to mind or things that um, you feel like are separating uh, you from God. This is a time that you can confess that. And God will remove those things from your life and forgive you from that. His promise is to do so. Say, thank you, Jesus, that you died for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. I now receive your forgiveness. I put my trust in you. I ask you to come into my heart by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. I choose this day to follow you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer with me, um, as much as there's nothing uh, magic in that, what you just did, as a staff, we would just love to come alongside you and help you find and follow Jesus. So in front of you, in the seat back in front of you, there's an information card that you can fill out and just check the box that says, I decided to follow Jesus today. You can drop it at one of the bo uh, boxes at the back of the sanctuary, or you can drop it off at the welcome tent, and then we will connect with you. We would love to come alongside you and just invite you into the community of Harbor Trinity and just knowing more about who Jesus is and the next steps that you could take. Now, maybe there are some of you here today um, who need healing from our never-changing God. Maybe you need healing in your marriage, healing in a specific friendship, or health, or maybe even healing from some kind of trauma. But you need healing right now from the same God that healed so many throughout the scriptures. If that's you today, I would love for you to just raise your hand so I could pray with you. Yeah, thanks to each of you. For the last group of people, maybe you recognize that for a long, um, that you long for a place of peace where you can rest in the truth that the God we worship is the same God that created the universe, that rescued captives, that did many miracles, that died for us and rose again. And that very same God that did all those things has not changed. If that's you today and you need to go to him and just give him your burdens and receive rest and peace. Could you raise your hands so I could pray with you too, please? Yeah, thanks so much for those lifting your hands. Okay, let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for today. God, we thank you most of all that your affections for us never change. You will not compromise and you cannot be persuaded. Your love for us never changes and you are always ready to welcome us back. God, I want to pray right now for the second group of people that are coming to you asking for healing. I ask, God, that you would heal them in the specific ways that they each need, whether in health, relationships, or trauma. We know you have healed before, and you are the same God, and we ask that you place your hand upon them and bring them healing. For the last group of people that are asking for peace, God, I ask that you help them to believe and remind them that, of the truth that you are the same God from long ago. You have not changed. Your love for them is the same as it was before. They, nothing they do or don't do can change that. You are the one constant that they can depend on. In our forever changing world, God, give them peace that you, our Heavenly Father, never differ from yourself. In Jesus' name, amen.